All right, so check this out. I just got out of the gym and I'm in, you know, usually if you know me and you already been following the page at Sales Remastered, you know that I, uh, I got this morning routine, right? And in my morning routine, I do, of course, the gym and, and typically I end with cardio. Well, my cardio, I usually go into real deep thought and I was going into the IG live uh, for a minute and kind of doing what I like to call a freestyle and just kind of go right off the hip and and usually let the audience who was watching at the time pick the topic and I'd go off that for about maybe 10 15 minutes on a rant well as of late what I've been doing is is uh, is trying to go a little bit of deeper thought with regards to you know analyzing the common issues that my team faces that I face and that I think are common issues that we all face one of the issues that I found is that we're all striving, right? Regardless of where you're at right now, you could be at rock bottom or you could be at the level that you, you know, you aspire to be, right? Like you would be killing it right now. And either way, what I know that we all share is that we, we just continue to want to strive. We continue to want to thrive. And so what I found is that regardless of where you are, you're always going to have that, that, how can I put it, that temptation to rely on plan B. Plan B is something that you got as kind of like a backup plan, right? Like if plan A don't work out, plan B will. Or you'll, you'll be okay because you got reserves or you got, you know, you got an alternative. And I wanna make sure that the audience who watch these videos and who, who appreciate the messages that I share, that you understand having an alternative or a plan B should not be your escape plan, should not be an escape route. As a matter of fact, what I've learned, because I've had plenty of times where I've had to find, or I should say, where I've had to secure a plan B, because, you know, I, I've, I've always kind of taken the chance. I've always, you know, lived my life on the edge and, and did things that were a little bit unorthodox and not of your, um, you know, your common practice, right? And I owe it all to the creativity, but that creativity is, has brought me pretty far. And so, I want to share with you how to keep your mind right and so that your focus doesn't get swayed and then you get lost venturing off to plan B. You see, plan B is good to have because it gives you somewhat that peace of mind, right? It's kind of like having an extra key. Or having a plan B is kind of like having reserves in the bank. And so if you're in sales, you know, if you blank out for one month, our income can go up and down depending on the time of year, the season, or depending on how, how strong your hustle was the month before. And so what we do is we typically live on the edge and when we make a, you know, like a big paycheck or you get paid a lot, you splurge, right? Well, what happens for the months that you don't go all out or you don't go ham or let's say the, the, you know, the market catches up or you take a vacation and your income dips, then what? So unless you're wired in a way to, to accept that and you don't have any reserves, Typically, what we do is we rely on Plan B, right? And sometimes that Plan B can, can, um, can kind of dilute our hustle because we know that, well, we can give ourselves a break because we got that Plan B. And so my message and my takeaway is that you may have a Plan B, and although that that is smart, I want you to learn how to want your Plan A more than you want your Plan B. Now, when I say Plan B, boo-boo, I'm not talking about birth, <laughs> contraceptive, Man, I hope I'm using that word right. So I want to share with you that, you know, like, like plan B, for example, could be education. It could be a degree. You know, sometimes you might come to an age where you might be like, man, I'm going back to school. And I don't got nothing against school, but, you know, I've seen people who are in their 30s, <laughs> in their 40s talking about, I'm going to go back to school. And, you know, me, in my opinion, and, you know, I don't know if you feel the same way, but if you're at that age where, where if you get to a point where, man, I want to go, I want to go back to school and, and, and looking at the opportunity and the resources that we have available, what, what I, I personally hear is that you want to you wanna sway from, your, from the direction that you've been on this entire time. And so it's different from going from high school to college where some people go from, you know, let's say high school to college and then they try and, you know, uh, generate a career or, or start a career. And, that career doesn't necessarily go in the direction that they want it to go and so sometimes they think about going back to school well when you go back to school you're starting all over right especially at, at an older age but more importantly you're putting yourself in debt 
And so the plan B ultimately becomes this anchor. Not only that, but it puts you under more stress. And what happens when you become emotionally and financially invested into plan B is that your plan B then transforms into your plan A. As a matter of fact, plan A starts vanishing little by little and the next thing you know, you're living in your plan B. Now the problem with that is though, is that you never aspired or reached your plan A. And so therefore you've taught yourself to settle with your plan B, get it? And so now settling with this plan B thus influences you that it's okay to settle. Now the thing is though, is that when you settle, you start settling on other things. You start settling on the qualities of your life. You start settling on the little things from the qualities of you know, your experiences, your daily experiences. It's like the difference between going to you know, a $3 movie or a Sinopolis, right? right? You ever been to a Sinopolis? It's pretty dope though, right? But if you've ever been to like a movie theater and, and you got the recliner seats and you got you know, waiters and waitresses coming in to deliver your food, it's a different experience, right? Than going to some like Regal's $3 matinee movie you know, where, where, there, where it's trash, it's, it's not that good quality. And I don't know why I'm using movies. Oh, I'm using movies because, you know, my wife had taken my, my two, our two youngest kids to Sinopolis to go watch The Incredibles. And I thought about it, you know, because I was at work, she sent me pictures and, you know, she's all, look, the kids are loving it. Everyone say, hi, daddy, right? And so she sent me over the text. And although I wish I could have been with them because I liked that, that, you know, that quality time with the family. What I did realize is that, you know, even though I would like to be with them or have some time off, technically that's plan B. <laughs> and so plan A though is to, you know, do what I do best and, and, and continue to position myself so that we can have the qualities and the options to, to choose Sinopolis versus, you know, downloading a movie on Netflix. Get it? And so and so if you, if you want to enjoy the qualities of what you see within your plan A, you got to learn that plan B should literally be the last, last resort, right? So instead of looking at plan B as like, oh, it's okay, I got this plan B or I got this alternative, you got to look at it as like, yo, plan B, that's the fucking last resort. That is the absolute last resort. Almost to a point where you are convinced to actually, to, to, almost hate plan B because if you hate your plan B and you you're not wanting to settle with your plan B then what happens is you just position yourself to fall more in love with plan A and if you fall more in love with plan A what I have found is that love and fear are one of the most strongest emotions that a human can feel as a matter of fact I want you to think how strongly you feel about the things you love how strongly you feel about the things you fear and so if we could position ourselves to instead love our plan A and then fear our plan B, what I believe is that you'll position yourself to do nothing but hit plan A and achieve that bitch. Make sense? I hope you reach your plan A. As a matter of fact, I hope that your plan A keeps expanding and that you continuously push yourself to that highest level. I want you to look at, look at going backwards and backpedaling as a plan B. And remember, today, and every day moving forward till forever rary. Learn to hate your plan B. Learn to fear that motherfucker. But when it comes to your plan A, when it comes to your original desire, your initial intuition, I want you to fall madly in love with it. And follow me and I'm gonna take you to the places so high, you're gonna be like, damn dog, was it this easy this entire time? Watch how I do it and learn from my lessons. I'll see you on the next video, bye.